I'm Akira. And you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Hola, ¿qué tal? A todos, buenas noches. Muchas gracias por el apoyo. Y bueno, estamos aquí más que contentos. Como yo lo dije desde el campamento, yo vengo a hablar arriba, arriba del ring. Yo vengo a buscar la pelea y vengo a conquistar el, el corazón de todo Dallas y donde quiera que me presente, donde quiera que vaya, voy a dar lo mejor de mí para que el público sea ganador. Gracias. I'm more than happy. Okay. I'm more than happy and I'm here to steal Dallas's heart. And I think I did that tonight to where I was really happy with my training camp and it reflected into what I did on inside the ring. I couldn't have performed any better and the fact that you that you got to see it, that this city got to see it and, and I was able to celebrate with the people here, that meant a lot to me. All right, if we have questions from the media, by all means, raise your hand. We have our outstanding PR team. Raise your hand, ask your question, and let us know where you're from, what media outlet. Thank you. All right, this is Skip Brown from Dante's Boxing Nation by way of Aki TV. First of all, congratulations. Ryan Garcia on Twitter said he wants to fight you next. Next, let's make the fight happen. What is your response? Ryan Garcia dijo en Twitter que quiere ser tu próximo oponente. ¿Cuál es tu respuesta? Él dijo que ganara la pelea. Ven Oscar de la Hoya, ven Ryan Garcia. Sentémonos a platicar con mi empresa y hagamos la pelea. Y hay que hablar arriba de ring, no en redes sociales. Y vamos a pelear, no a bailar. Well, they said that I need to win this fight. I won this fight. Now, Oscar de la Hoya, Ryan Garcia, come on down and negotiate with us. Let's make this fight happen, but not in social media. Let's negotiate and let's not dance. Let's fight. Pitbull, eh, César Seda por aquí, Decisión Dividida, América TV. Oye, sabemos que Ryan García está hablando todo eso en las redes sociales, pero también comprendemos que la compañía PBC trabaja entre sí y vimos hoy a un Rayo Valenzuela hacer un gran trabajo ante un, uno que fue rival tuyo. Eh, ¿Podría verse eso también, mexicano contra mexicano, tú contra el Rayo Valenzuela? Bueno, la pregunta, uh, the question is that, you know, regardless of what Ryan Garcia is doing on social media, there could also be the possibility of facing Valenzuela in an all PBC fight. Isaac, how would you feel about that? Isaac, uh, responde la pregunta cuando quieras. Yo lo he dicho, yo no me cierro a pelear con nadie siempre y cuando se lleguen a buenos términos entre mi promotor y manejador y su manejador de rayo, con Ryan, con Lomachenko, con... Bring anybody on. I'm not shutting the door on anyone. Uh, whether it's uh, Rayo or we, whether it's Garcia or it's Lomachenko, bring them on. I'm open to talk to anybody, but they need to talk to me first. That's where it all starts, really. All right, James Bell from the Boxing Source, Esau. Um, coming into this fight, and you know when you came out for your uh, introduction, you had one of the biggest, um, you know, reactions coming out there, and had a whole lot of support. What did that mean to you to have all of that support here in ATT Stadium? Bueno, cuando saliste al ring aquí, te dieron una ovación muy grande. Digamos que fue una de las ovaciones más grandes de la noche. ¿Cómo te cómo te hizo sentir eso? El apoyo, el cariño del público, Carlos. Pues yo me lo he ganado gracias a sacrificio, esfuerzo y arriba del ring, no haciendo publicaciones ni hablando en otros lados, sino con hechos arriba del ring. I've earned everything I have right now, but I've done so inside the ring with blood, sweat and tears, with the dedication that I put every single day, not with social media posts or anything like that, by doing what I have to do with love son. All right, I'm going to give Isaac Cruz the floor to give final comments because we are, you know, we've been very busy and we await the welterweight champion of the world. But Isaac, if you have final thoughts on what was a memorable performance coming off of your loss, coming out and wiping out your Ryoki Scamboa in the fifth round, I think proving to the world that you are without question a formidable force and a legit contender at 135. Your final thoughts before nearly 40,000 fans that you displayed your talents here tonight on Showtime Pay-Per-View. Isaac, te luciste ante 40.000 personas, hoy demostraste que sos un contendiente de primera y que además te recuperaste de la derrota de diciembre del año pasado. Comentarios finales, ¿qué crees que sepa la gente de este Isaac Cruz que se lució con un knockout en el quinto round contra un ex campeón como Yuri Gamboa? 
eh, yo vine a dar un claro mensaje a la división, que Isaac Pickle Cruz va a dar de qué hablar en la división y que no le, no le teme miedo a nadie, a ningún campeón, a ningún clasificado y esté para los grandes nombres. Gracias. The whole division is on notice. I don't fear any champion anywhere, anytime. I'm ready for all challenges. Bring them on. And thank you very much, everyone here, for coming to the fight. I'm going to borrow a phrase from uh, your promoter, one of the members of part of your promotional team, Sean Gibbons of MP Promotions, and say, Viva Isaac Cruz, ladies and gentlemen. Viva. Congratulations. Thank you. Muchas gracias a todos. Thank you. Buenas noches. The Pitbull, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be hearing a lot from him. He allowed his fist to do the talking here tonight. Congratulations, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. WBC and the IBF welterweight champion of the world. He told me on Wednesday he was going to be man down, and that's exactly what he did. A 10 round stoppage over your Dennis Ugas. I will give him the podium to have his moment. Errol, the truth, Spence Jr., ladies and gentlemen, the unified welterweight champion of the world. How's it going? I'd like to thank everybody for coming out, man. I think it was a big event. You know, Dallas really came out and supported me and showed a lot of love. And, uh, you know, I showed my gratitude, like I said, on, on social media, showing my gratitude by not just telling them, but showing my appreciation by showing them in the ring. And I, I think that's what I did. Everybody um, enjoyed the show. They got their money work. I put on a great show and a great performance. And um, I appreciate everybody for watching it on Showtime pay-per-view and spending your hard-earned money and coming to the fight. Appreciate you spending your time and your hard our money coming to the fight too. Thank you. Cameron Buford, Los Angeles News Observer, by way of Voice of the Fans. Um, congratulations, Spence, for, for doing your work, getting in there and putting them away. Um, at what point, did, in the third round, that was an exciting third round. Did he frustrate you in that third round? In the sixth round, did he piss you off? Um, it was just <clears throat> in the third round. I think it was like even the start of the fight. I was I was getting a little bit, you know, I was kind of off a little bit, you know. I guess the layoff, but I was kind of off a little bit and uh, trying to find my rhythm and my range. So and I was throwing like looping shots. My shots were coming a little bit hard, and I wasn't setting up my punches or just letting them go. Like I did in the later rounds, just start being more effective and I started letting go. But at the first start, I started just throwing hard and trying to, and trying to um, you know, put a lot of emphasis in my shots. Thanks. Yeah, this is Skip Brown from Dante's Boxing Nation by way of Aki TV. First of all, congratulations, champ. Thank you. Terrence Crawford tweeted, quote, congratulations, great fight. Now the real fight happens. No more talk, no more side of the street, Let's go. What's your response to uh, Terrence Crawford's comment? I mean, I already responded. I mean, I already said what I said when I was in the ring. I got, and I've been saying it this whole week, doing presses and everything. I said, I'm, it's, it's, it's man strap season. I got more built to get. And, uh, you know, after I get through Lugas, I'm coming at Terrence Crawford. So I already know what time it is. Errol, uh, Cesar said over here, America TV, Decision Dividida, Puerto Rico. Hey, we saw this is the second time that we see the same thing happen with the mouse pit uh, situation, right? Hey, do you have to work on correcting the situation with the mouse pit? The same thing happened in the Garcia fight. You uh, you lost the mouse pit and you went looking for it too. It's, 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 it's keep happening. <laughs> hey, now nah, you, you got a point. You're right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, I just got to I gotta get a new mouth piece. My mouth piece <laughs> been messed up. I gotta get a new mouth piece. It's like it's not. Mold into my mouth at all, so just flopping everywhere. And then, so I gotta bite down real hard for it to stay in my mouth. So that's my fault. That's a, a rookie mistake for me. And that was a rookie mistake for me too. Like looking off and looking for my mouthpiece, and then, you know, I get punched like three times. So, you know, that was my fault too, because you put the ticket stuff at all times. So, you know, hey man. <laughs> Do you think Sorry. if that happened with Crawford? Do you think it's, it's, it's going to be the same outcome? Uh, I mean, I don't know what the future holds, but 
I didn't say it, I'm gonna give you a mouth beat. Chance I early. You uh really started right here in front of you. Uh, you really started applying pressure right after that situation. And uh, can you talk about the dog, Michael Irvin? I, I saw him after the fight, he was very fired up. He said, that's what we do, we break mother. Can you talk about your style and, and that pressure that you put on to make a fighter uh, break inside of the ring? Um, I think when the fight first started, I was being kind of impatient. Um, I don't think I had my rhythm and my range. So, you know, I was throwing like looping shots, you know, trying to throw hard shots and trying to catch them, but in the later rounds when I started, you know, setting my shots up and placing my shots and picking my shots and uh, not throwing hard, but just, you know, letting them go. Uh, I think I was catching them a lot and, you know, breaking them down. And um, and I felt them breaking down because, you know, he wasn't throwing like he, he, he usually does. So I was like, okay, I got him down. And then, uh, you know, I just kept punching. You know, I thought the rip was gonna stop it a lot earlier. But, you know, you just let it keep going. Uh, Keith Heide from com. Congratulations, Errol. Thank you. Um, now that you've both made it crystal clear that you want this fight next, how difficult do you expect the negotiations to be, and what do you think would be fair for both of you? Um, I'm not going to talk about what's going to be fair for both of us. Uh, you know, that's for the guys in suits to go around and look. Analytics and <laughs> stuff like that, and you know, see what you know we both bring to the table, and then you know, sort it out like that. So, you know, he got his people that you know take care of his business. I got my people, you know, they'll meet up, and you know, it it make sense. Earl, uh, straight down. Danny Alvarez here. First and foremost, congratulations on the victory. Uh, there's been a lot of questions regarding the eye, and obviously now you got in there, you showed. People were saying it hasn't been man down in a while. You show, um, how do you feel now stepping out of the ring, getting a, a TKO here in front of your home crowd, and obviously first fight back since the detest right now? I, I feel good. I mean, it was a lot of questions that y'all had, not myself. Cause I've been in, I've been in the gym, I've been sparring, so I didn't have any questions. Y'all had a lot of questions in the doubt, and you know, saying he was what's this or he not the same fight or. It's only natural, I'd ask for it. it's only natural that when you have an eye surgery, you're gonna be tentative in the in the in the ring and all the other bull crap. And then that, like as you seen, like it was no tentativeness or anything like that. Like, you know, I was fighting, you know, I was fighting to get a knockout, so you know, I felt good. Hey Arrow, James Bell here at the boxing source. Now in key fights, it's all about adjustments and like, you know, change the momentum of the fight. In the third and the fourth round, you pretty much started to land that left uppercut, and that was pretty much where he just didn't just didn't have an answer for it. So, um, like, kind of going through those adjustments as far as like you know keeping consistent with the jab, but also incorporating the left uppercut, where you know he just didn't have an answer for that. Um, like it's just about making adjustments, like you said. Um, I think that's you know it is my style. Like I make adjustments on the fly. When I mean, something's not going right, you know, that's what I do, and I try to look for different things. So, and like, I was throwing the, the left, it wasn't working, so I was jabbing, setting it up, and then throwing the right hook, it was working, then I was throwing my short shots underneath, and then coming over the top, and that was working. So, um, you know, I was just trying different things, and, you know, and the things that I was working, I started using more and more and more as the fight started going, and I started settling it in. Earl, uh, congrats, champ. Steve Cudeño, uh, Kale Water Sports. Your body attack was, was vicious tonight, man. And do you feel that helped open up the shots to the eye? And, and with the eye closing, did you see it closing, obviously, and, and maybe kind of start going for it more, thinking maybe the stoppage would come from that? Um, I did see it closing, but, you know, I was just targeting, you know, what was open and just trying to punch through his, punch through his guard. I know a lot of times he just sit and brace himself and you know try to take the shots. So I would just punch through the ball. Okay, we got that for one last question. Um, Thank right you, here. Valencia King with Real Talk Sports right here. Oh, congratulations Thanks. again. My question is, you came out to none other than Southside the Realist. It's the big T-U-C-K. What was that moment like for you? Because the city of Dallas was on 10. Uh, yeah, that's what you know. I aim to do, especially fighting in Dallas. 
you know, I want to bring homegrown, you know, people that's from the city. And, uh, you know, I think it was a great moment for the city of Dallas because, to me, that's that's the biggest song that ever came out of Dallas. And, you know, everybody know that song, you know, um, so word, word for word. So I feel like it was a great moment, you know, a historic moment. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to keep putting on great shows and great performances. And, you know, if I can, you know, I'm going to come out to, you know, this is probably my, yeah, this is my third rapper from Dallas that I came, came out with. So, you know, I'm always trying to, you know, show love, you know, back to my city, especially, you know, if somebody have a, has a great song, you know, I, I want to get to as much exposure as I can. Yeah, so, yes. Well, well, congratulations. Thank you. Time off, my friend. Let's give a round of applause to Errol Spence Jr., ladies and gentlemen, the unified welterweight champion of the world. An incredible performance. Also, Derek James, who's a steam trainer, his entire team, as Errol Spence, just the third guy, the first guy to main event three times here at AT&T Stadium. Thank you to the media. Thank you, Dallas, for being unbelievable. Have a great one, everybody. And congrats. Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man Scalp Carolinas on Instagram. Get ready to take your striking game to the next level with the Focus Ball. Dramatically improved footwork, timing, head movement, hand-eye coordination, reflex, and overall fight IQ. It's lightweight and extremely portable, so you can train every time, everywhere. When you don't have a coach to do mitt work, get a focus ball. When you don't have a heavy bag to hit, get a focus ball. When you don't have a sparring partner, get yourself a focus ball. And when you just wanna have fun punching and kicking, get a focus ball. When you train with the focus ball, you train your eyes and your brain to read punches so that you can hit and not get hit. Making this very simple device a must have for all combat sports athletes and enthusiasts alike. So if you want to take your striking game to the next level, don't wait. Get the focus ball now.